The Challenge of the Yukon. Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes a trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his Wonder Dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The Double Eagle Saloon in Doville was crowded. The rectangular room was full of prospectors, trappers, and professional gamblers. Chichacos and sourdoughs lined the bar, and at the tables, men gambled for high stakes. Chick Allison sat talking to Blackie Thornton. Looking up, he saw the door of the saloon open. Well, look who's here. The richest man in the Yukon. You know him well? Too well. Well, he sure didn't notice us. Yeah, Ma don't know there's anything in the world but gold. I often wonder if he ever stops to think what it costs him. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, Ma come up here from the States. When he did, he brought his daughter Janie with him. She died about a year ago. Died? Yeah. And if you ask me, it was the cold that killed her. That and having one of the stubbornest men for a father that ever walked. I, I see what you mean. Uh, look at him over there. He's going to drink alone, I guess. What are you going to have, Mark? The usual. Bring the bottle over here. Uh, Drinking by yourself? Yeah. Where's Walt Crandall? Oh, he ain't been in yet. With all the dust you got, you still got to put pressure on Crandall to pay you something that it don't amount to a row of beans. How much it comes to ain't important. I don't owe anybody nothing. And I expect other people to be the same way. You're just about the orneriest, most jewel-faced dog I ever saw, Mort. One of these days, somebody's going to get fed up with you, and when they do, it'll be curtain. That don't worry me none. Better give it some thought, then. Some one of a half dozen men is going to have good reason to fill you full of lead. And there's a lot more people who would be mighty glad to see it happen. afternoon of the next day. On the trail north of Doville, the great dog king bent his head and stopped completely, nuzzling the snow. Hey, what is it, boy? All right. Oh, you Malamute! Oh! What's wrong, boy? Oh, someone in the snow. The way it's been blowing is almost covered. Mortimer Leonard. Yes, he's dead, fella. Shot in the back. Lifting the dead man from the snow, the Mountie carried him to the sled. Then King again took his place in front of the team. On King! On you, At one time, Sergeant Preston lost the trail where it had been covered by wind-driven snow. Relying on King's trailing scent, the Mountie gave the Malamute his head. When the tracks were again visible, the policemen saw that they merged and joined with the tracks of two others left. Oh, you Malamute! Three sets of tracks. No way to tell which are the ones we want. Well, boy, the only thing we can do is follow all three of them as long as they stay together. Come on. All right, fella. On King! On you, Malamute! Meantime, at Mortimer Leonard's cabin, Chick Allison sat talking with Walter Crandall and Blackie Thornton when... Well, Sergeant Preston, consigned if Mark don't have more visitors... Come on in and sit down, Sergeant. You might as well make yourself at home, too. Thanks, Walt. How are you, Chick? Blackie? Oh, I'm all right. Say, something wrong, Sergeant? Yes, there is. You're all waiting for Mort? That's right. Don't know just how welcome I'll be, but he can't no more than throw me out. How long have you been here? Well, I got here first about an hour ago, I guess. Then Walt come in. 
Just a little while before you did, Blackie walked in. Why? Mort's dead. Damn, what? He is. is. I found him on the trail with a bullet in his back. Uh, and that's why he didn't come. I thought it was funny. He had a head start. Do you have any idea who killed him, Sergeant? The tracks of the man who killed him led to this cabin. Had he? And that means... That means that one of you murdered Mort. He was killed within the last hour. Now, wait a minute, Sergeant. Me? I just come out to see if I couldn't get him to grubstake me. I didn't know. The man who killed Mort came here. It was to get his gold. That's right. Chick was talking to me in the double eagle. And he said that he wondered whether Mort left his dust hole up on the floor of the cabin when he went into town. Now, hold on there. I never said no such you thing. You think twice and you'll remember that you did. <laughs> but I didn't mean it. It don't matter what you meant. You said it. All right. What's your reason for being here? You pointed Mort out to me as the richest man in the Yukon. So? So I came here for the same reason you did. I wanted him to grubstake me. I haven't been in the territory long. Came up from the States Green, so I... A likely story. Just about as likely as yours. What about you, Walt? Well, I owed Mort some money. He was getting pretty nasty about it, so I came out here to pay up. Uh, here, uh, I can show you the cash. I see. Did he threaten you if you delayed payment? He said he'd go to the president of the bank unless I paid him. If he'd done that, it might have cost me my job. Well, one of you three is guilty of murder, and all of you can be arrested on suspicion of murder. Arrested? Uh, yes. What? I've got handcuffs with me. Only one pair, but there's another out in the sled. I'll have to go out and get them. King, you stay here and stand guard. <laughs> Understand, boy? Listen to that wind. When the storm breaks, it'll be a bad one. Uh, I don't see any wood around. We sure could use a fire. Uh, we won't be here long, I guess. Uh, traveling in that storm ain't going to be a picnic, neither. Here we are. You taking us into town, Sergeant? No, there's a blizzard coming up. Just when it'll break, I don't know, and I don't want to risk losing a prisoner between here and Doleville. Anyway, I think the crime can be solved right here. In this cabin? Yes. I could get to Doleville myself, even if the blizzard breaks. By bringing back two deputies, we could settle this here. Then, when you go back to town, only one man will go to jail. You mean you're going to leave us in this cabin? Hey, it's colder than an ice floe in this place. And no wood around for a fire, either. If you keep your heavy jackets on, you'll be all right. I'll use these handcuffs to fasten you together. I'll tie your feet with a rope. You take much of a chance in us getting away, are you? Well, when you when you be back, Sergeant? Oh, sometime between now and morning. <laughs> Fort Leonard was a buzzard if ever one walked. He, why, the guy deserved to die. I don't see why Well, you... regardless of what Mort was, a murder's been committed and the law has to be satisfied. But I'm going to give the murderer a chance. A chance? I'm going to leave a gun here with one cartridge in it. Before I get back, the killer wants to take the easy way out. The gun will be where he can reach it. On the floor, in front of the three of you. Now I'll get the rope and then leave you. After the Mountie left the cabin, the three men were silent. Outside, the wind rushed against the small building. The fury of the approaching storm mounted and broke seeming to grip the cabin itself. Snow and ice were driven against the windows. Oh, will you stop pulling at these braces? I was just trying to get more comfortable. You got the skin rubbed off my wrist already. A chick spoke. The flame in the oil lamp on the table sputtered, then went out, leaving the cabin in total darkness. <laughs> That's fine. Not even a light in the place. Oh, shut up, will you? It's bad enough freezing in here without having to step in the dark. Can't see your hand in front of you. If the man that did the shooting was smart, he'd pick up the gun. In a frenzy, the wind descended on the cabin. It swept through the wastelands of the north, terrifying in its intensity. But to Chick Allison, Blackie Thornton, and Walter Crandall, the fury of the storm seemed to be concentrated, tearing at the small cabin. The logs of the building creaked in eerie protest against the teeth of the wind and storm. The nerves of the three men were on edge. When Preston gets back here, he'll tear this place apart. Yeah, that's right. And he'll stay here till he finds out who killed Mark. That Mount, he don't know the meaning of the word quit. There's never been a murder yet that he couldn't figure out. Yeah. It'd be an easy thing for the man that did it to pull the trigger. A lot easier than falling through a trap door. Well, one of you did it. Whichever one it is, it's a blame fool if he don't reach for that gun. Check. How do we know you didn't kill Mort? Because I say I didn't. Might have been war. Uh, I didn't kill him. And I know I didn't kill well, him. Well, one of us is a liar, and it ain't me. Uh, 
going through all this. I'm having to face the sergeant in the morning. Well, we don't like it any more than you do. I'm going to pick up that gun. One of us. One of us is a murderer. I can't stand this any longer. Well, uh, one of you that did it pick up that gun! devil wasn't worth this. What? He didn't have a friend in the world. Everybody hated him. And I hate him now worse than ever. Sitting here freezing. Uh, uh, it was pretty white of the sergeant to leave that gun there. If he comes in in the morning and finds one of us dead, the whole thing will be finished. The men became silent, shifting their positions from time to time. Time dragged, marked by the sound of jangling handcuffs. Suspense was like a steel weight pressing on the consciousness of each man. One of us is a murderer. Three men, two of them wondering, the third man knowing who was the murderer. Beads of sweat, cold sweat, dotted forehead. Eyes ache from the effort of peering into darkness. Throats tightened and burned, parched and dry. electric with tension, there was a jangle of handcuffs. Nothing indicated that it was any more than one of the three men shifting his weight against the hard floor. But in the darkness, a hand reached, fumbled, groping, then contacted the cold steel of the gun. The fingers pressing against the weapon's grip hesitated, then closed. An instant later... Oh! oh who did it? Who are you? Lighted, the dog will take him. All I know is that it wasn't me. Blackie! Wolf! I'm here. Oh, the light. Wait, wait, wait. It must have been Wolf. No, no. Oh, look at the powder burns on the front of his jacket. You got back just in time, Sergeant. I was outside waiting for the sound of the shot. I tell you, I didn't do it. I never touched that gun. You had a chance at the easy way out and you muffed it. He didn't muff it. That gun had a blank cartridge on it. Blank? Yes. But you said that... I said the killer had a chance for the easy way out, and he might have had. Except that he used that gun to frame an innocent I... man... I, I, I tell you, I didn't do it. I know you didn't do it, Walt. Blackie, that gun butt was smeared with soot from the lantern. Look at your hand. Well, I'll be... You tried to cover your own guilt by murdering another man. <laughs> All right. I would have killed Walt, yes. I killed Mort Leonard. I killed him just as he killed his daughter, Janie. Except that he had an easier death. Janie? Yeah. I... I was in love with her back in the States. When he found out about it, he he brought her up here. Had her stay here. Gold meant more to him than her health. That, that that's why I was gonna take every bit of gold he had. That's all he cared about. I'll only live for. Her. You're going to hang for murder, Blackie. Yeah. I know it. I'll hang and and well, I, I'm ready to. Yes, fellow. Thanks to your help, the case is closed. These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at the same time and reach you from our transcript.